Welcome back to the Hockey Show, and today we are talking about the Carolina Hurricanes, the team that is on an absolute tear right now as they are on a seven-game winning streak after their last win against the Philadelphia Flyers, and they are just chugging along and plowing everyone over as they are first in the Metropolitan, now fourth in the NHL with 18 points, 9-2, and two, the team from Raleigh, team and from North Carolina, that team team is just on freaking fire which is funny because they're hurricanes so it's all wet and rainy but anyways this team's on fire but i have a question though is this going to turn into a long-term success for the hurricanes right because the canes this season really or like at this point in their career i would say like career the current like stage of this team's life is success that is the only thing they can go for right because i remember when i first really started getting into hockey when i was like really finally like digging my teeth into things i would say it was around 2018 i would say and i would i i believe around 2019 2020 is when the hurricanes finally i think broke into the playoffs the first time in a while and that was like you know they were testing the waters you know they finally are a playoff potential team and they get in there and i remember a few like i i kind of fuzzy but definitely like they had a, a couple series against like the Bruins they showed up and they like they seemed strong they had a couple good series they'd win a round or two not a round or two I think they win like the first round get the second round then lose and then a few years ago they finally made it to the conference finals against the Florida Panthers where they looked really good in that one and should have probably won that series except one issue that has plagued the ever-living fuck out of this team is goal scoring that is what has plagued this team forever. And in that series, the furthest they've gone ever since winning the Stanley... Well, actually, I don't know if that's true. But very far close to the Stanley Cup Finals is the farthest they got. And that plague is still haunting this team till this day. And is that going to change this season? This team is now on like a six, seven year... Seven. The, pff, like six year, I think seven maybe, year run getting to the playoffs. They need that success to come out, right? They need to have a good run to a championship. You know, at this point, that is what is... That is what is all left there to claim, right? The President's Trophy, if they win that, if they did, who really cares? You know, great season, whatever. That No one ever is like, yeah, my team won the President's... No, we want the Stanley Cup to come to this team. And is that going to happen this year? Well, let's take a look. Do they finally have a guy on this team to give them some goals, to get that killing edge? Or does this team have a built-in advantage that they have above other teams to get them over the distance right so right now the big story is of course martin natchez marty natchez can't spell canes without natchez he is on a 17 point well i guess streak in seven games 17 points in seven games that is crazy not even my best player in my nhl games i think i i could even make that happen so that is unreal by Marty Natchez. Of course, he has uh, 20 points overall this season, which puts him sixth in the NHL, well, tied for sixth in the NHL, I think, with Mark Stone. And that's pretty good for the Hurricanes, right? They usually don't have that top guy who's in the standings, top 10, or even, I should say, not even, not even just in the top 10, but close to the top 10. But they do right now in Marty Natchez. But is that going to continue, right? Ever since he's dyed his hair, apparently, he's been on this streak. But who is around him as well, right? Let's look at this. Andre Svechnikov, 12, second pl on this team, 12 points. Aho, third place, 10 points. Then you get to Jarv and you get to Ghost and you get nine points from those guys and you go to Kotkin and Yemi with eight, which at that point, things don't look very good there. And that is what kind of frightens me for this team going forward is that they have this one guy who's on a complete heater right now. It was going to cool down. And unless Natchez doesn't, which would be amazing, right? Because I remember, and I was a big advocate for Martin Natchez, because I was like two years ago, this guy led the team. He had his breakout season. I think he got 74 points, led the Hurricanes in uh, points that year. He's had like a year off. I think he had like 59 points last year, something that crazy. But he's bouncing back currently, right? 20 points right now in uh, 11 games. I would assume he gets to at least that 70-point mark again. I, I would hope so. 
And uh, and Nate just has always been one of those guys that he is a killer shot. I saw him up. I saw him in the first game of the season. He was absolutely lethal on the ice. Except one issue is the actual lethality, right? He was like a snake who had no eyes, right? He was like a rattlesnake that didn't couldn't see anything. But if he could get something, he would kill it. And he was so close. He has a killer shot. He has an amazing vision of the ice. He can move through players. He can dangle through people. It's a beautiful way to watch his game play. But it's the it's the finish, right? And that has been the issue with the Hurricanes for so many years now. And the question is, can any of this continue? Or can this team actually produce any of those results that they need? And I have a theory that this team has done nothing. They haven't changed anything. They haven't added or anything to fix those issues, right? Defensively, they still are great defensively. Offensively, they have a great depth on their team. They can put out their four lines. They can play strong. Goaltending-wise is definitely a bit of an interesting thing, but I think they do have goaltenders that can keep them competent at least and play as long as everyone else plays good. So the Canes are a playoff team. They get to the playoffs, but when they run into a team like the Devils, right? What is the winning strategy against the Devils in the first round of the playoffs? They would need to shut down their top guys, right? And you need to shut down Jack Hughes and Jesper Bratt and Nico Heischer. And I think they could do that. I definitely think that they can knock out guys like Jack Hughes. I think they have the size to bully him on the ice, keep him from really making those plays. I think the same thing goes for Jesper Bratt. And I think they can shut those guys down enough for their offense to kick in. And for a team like the Devils, where the defense is actually doing pretty good this year and goaltending-wise is doing good too, is where it scares me. Because I think the, the, the offense production from Jack Hughes and stuff will finally show up, and that'll knock out the Canes. They just don't have any advantage in any single category that puts them over the line at this current point and that is why i've always had a little bit of glimmer of hope for the hurricanes is because they have the potential there right sebastian aho he is like a like spit and chiclets has said like i think every everyone who watches hockey he is the guy that is like right there like they're superstar players and then it's all-star right or whatever you want to qualify him as like, it's elite, and then it's, like, really good. And Aho is, like, the prime guy that is really good. And I think Nate just can be in that category, too. I just think he's, for some reason, less talking about. And I think those two guys, paired with Svechnikov, who's just, who, who feels like one of those, it, it, it's so weird. Svechnikov is, like, not, like, an amazing goal scorer. He's a great playmaker, but it's, like, he's all offense, but he doesn't create, like, a thousand goals or anything like that. He's a weird mix of player there, too, right? Seth Jarvis, can he explode into a goal scorer? They have those potential guys to light up and then elevate the other guys, too, to, like, a big status as well. It's just they need to break through, and right now, I think they're going to play fine like they do every single regular season. They're a fine team, top three. They'll end up in top three no matter what. And they'll uh, probably not first place, or maybe it will be first place. Nah, probably not. They're having their big stride now. They won't finish out the year like that. So the, the, the Devils will take first place in the Metropolitan Division. They'll play against the, the New York Rangers where Igor Sturkin's going to be able to shut them down. And guys like Zabenejad, Kreider, and Trocek will have a good first round before they all evaporate in the thin air. And Sturkin's there just to play on his own. And that'll be the story once again for the New York Rangers. But in their reign to failing, they will knock out the Hurricanes. And it's just because the Canes, year after year, they don't have a goaltender unless, once again, that potential of Kachetkov just fires out of nowhere, right? And it's just all these if these things happen for the Hurricanes. And that's what always scares me about them every year. And could this finally be the year where the stars align right at the perfect point? Maybe. And I think it's possible, especially because the Devils are having their big breakthrough again this season, and I don't think they're completely ready to be a playoff team yet, Rhett, so they could take down them in the East, depending if they find them. I think the Rangers are a—I'm are, are, still a big uh, sayer that they are absolutely fugazi out there, and I think that they could knock them out. And then in the Eastern Conference Finals, could a team like Florida go all the way to the end again? Maybe. Could a team like uh, the Lightning, 
right, who are playing pretty good right now, too. Could they take them out? What about the Capitals, right? I think that it's just the Canes need to have those perfect stars aligned because all those other teams you think of, they have that killing edge, right? If they play against the Devils, they have great offense, they have good defense right now, and a good goaltending. It's like, it's all up in the air for the Hurricanes. And so for me, I think right now, do I buy them? No. I don't think this is the Hurricanes team to win the Stanley Cup. I think they're hot right now. They're going to have their hot little streak. Things will fiddle off. They'll go into the playoffs, and they will lose in the first or second round, depending on when they run in to probably the New Jersey Devils, I would say. Or maybe the Rangers. Well, there's also the Capitals. It depends on where they run into people. But wherever it is... I just don't think it matters because the Hurricanes will be once again a team that it should be shooting for the stars right now, but is deciding to just stay okay without making too many moves. So that is all I've got to say about the Carolina Hurricanes. So thank you for watching this. Made it this far. Please, I'm begging you, please subscribe. Until next time, too sweet. Have an amazing day, and ta-ta for now. Ah.